Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Selah family. Charlene Aaron here, and you're watching Selah Network, Saturday Selah. And I am so excited to share God's word with you today. I pray that you are doing well this beautiful Saturday. Let me know where you're watching from, and we will give you a shout out. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy. I was just singing the song. Worthy is his name. And I want to play it for you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let's see. I want to play this song because it's just, it's such a beautiful song. And it's, and it's so, he's so worthy to be praised. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, wake up and worship him this morning. Let's worship our King, our Savior. Hey, Brother David, I, I saw that you had a birthday. Happy birthday to you. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. We just worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Patricia. Hallelujah. Listen to this song. I will sing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> worthy. He's worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve the praise, Jesus. Good morning, Leisha, my sweet Leisha Lee. Hallelujah. Sing it. Worthy. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Type worthy in if you know he's worthy. Good morning, Letitia. Good morning. Type worthy if you know that Jesus is worthy of the praise. Now, good morning, my sister Teresa. Stand amazed. His love undeniable. The grace goes on and on. And I will sing your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name. all the praise our Jesus deserves all the praise worthy is your name Jesus hallelujah worthy 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 is your name you deserve the praise Something about worship that just, just gets rid of all the worry and anxiety. We just begin to worship God for who he is. Just begin to declare, God, you are worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Be exalted. As you glory first this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place and this space. Hallelujah. You're the name above all names. Be exalted. High above. Hallelujah. As your glory fills this place and this space. As your glory fills this place, Jesus, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names, Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. As you're logging on, if you're worship, wondering who is this woman, we're just worshiping Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Be exalted as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. You're the name above all names, Jesus. There's no other name higher than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the name above all names. Somebody type that in. Jesus, your name is above all names. There's no name higher than your name, Jesus. There's no name greater than your name, Jesus. We exalt your name, Jesus. We give you glory this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. Worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Ah, you deserve the praise. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. If you know he's been good to you and he's worthy of praise, put some hearts on the page for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. If you know he is worthy of the praise, hallelujah, put some hearts on the page for Jesus this morning. It's all about Jesus. Amen. It's all about him. It's all for his glory, for his honor, and for his fame. Hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, Jesus. Come on, put some hearts on the page for Jesus. If you know he's worthy, if you know that Jesus is worthy of praise and honor and glory, he's worthy of you putting a heart on Facebook for him. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Jesus, you are so worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. Hallelujah. All the time. He's worthy of praise all the time in the good times, in the bad times, when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are worthy of praise regardless of what is going on in the world. If good things are happening, you're worthy. If bad things are happening, you're worthy. If it doesn't look good, you're still worthy. He's worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the time, all the time. All, not some of the times, not half the time, not a little bit of the time, but all the time. Jesus is worthy to be praised. If you get that revelation in your heart, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He's worthy of praise and glory all the time. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord when? At all times. <laughs> His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Is that your testimony today? Have you made up your mind this morning that you are going to bless the Lord at all times and that his praise will continually be in your mouth? Is that your testimony? Is that your declaration that you will bless the Lord, whether you have a job, whether you have good health or not, whether you have uh, whatever it is that you need or desire that you've made up in your mind, regardless of what's going on, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because he's worthy all the time. Amen. He is worthy all the time. Good morning. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. Yes, Dr. Ruby Lanette, he is worthy all the time. Amen. Good morning, Rhonda. Allah, praise the Lord. Denitra, my sister, God bless you. Good to see you on this morning. And we are just so excited because God is good and he's worthy to be praised and he's worthy all the time. And we're, we've made up our minds here on Salem Network that we're going to bless the Lord. Amen. At all times. And his praise will continually be in our mouth. Praise God. Again, I'm Charlene Aaron. If this is your first time watching, let us know that this is your first time and we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Good morning, Janet from Southern California. Good morning, Kavisha, my precious little one. Amen. God bless you. That's right, Olive. Please share and please invite. 
please share and invite because we want to populate Facebook with God's word. We want to populate Facebook with God's word. And I want, want to share a quick word with you this morning. Praise God. We're not going to hold you very long, but we're going to open up with a word of prayer. All right. Good to see you too, Janet. Good to see you back. Amen. We're here. Praise God. So let's just open up in a word of prayer. We're going to dive into the scriptures. We're going to look in Luke chapter 12 today. A quick, short word, but a word nonetheless. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, that you are worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory all the time. Father, we bless you, Father, for who you are. You are awesome, Father. We just bless you. We thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for blessing us to come together around your word. And we thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come now and just fill us up, Lord God, and just give us understanding and open the word to us, open our understanding and impart, Lord God, your wisdom and your word into our hearts for the sake of us practicing it, for us to put it into practice, for us to walk it out, not just to hear it, but to be a doer of your word. So Father, we thank you for teaching us the word today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our midst. Thank you for stirring us up Oh God, as we hear your word today, but not just stir us up, Lord God, but give us the desire and the power to walk out what we hear by way of your word this day. We ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to ask you a question. What are you watching? What are you watching? You know, there's so much happening in the world today. And I just want to ask you, what are you watching? Because there's so many, you know, people are watching the news. I work in television. I work in news. And it's an, it's like a never ending cycle. When cable television and cable news came out, it's like this 24 hour cycle of news all the time. And it's just, it can consume you if you let it. It can consume you. There's so much happening on the internet. There's so much happening in our world. But God is asking us, what are you watching, beloved? What are you watching? Amen. And we're looking at Luke chapter 12 today. And this chapter, Jesus is teaching his disciples many things. This is the same chapter, Luke chapter 12, where Jesus is teaching his disciples several lessons. He's teaching them, you know, to, to don't worry about their lives, what you shall eat and what you shall drink and what you shall put on. You know, he's telling them to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that, you know, that you're seeking will be added unto you. He's, he's admonishing them to uh, put their treasures um, in heaven. You know, he's telling them to you know, where your heart is. That's where your treasure is going to be. So he's teaching them all of these valuable lessons in this chapter. And then we get down to verse 35 and he's telling them to be watchful. He's admonishing his followers. He says, be watchful. And we're looking at verse 35 of Luke 12. And Jesus is speaking and he says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And it shall come in, and, he, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Amen. Blessed are those, hallelujah, who the Lord finds watching when he comes. We, we know that Jesus is coming back one day, amen? But I wanna ask you this question. Are you living in a way right now, today, 
in a manner that is worthy when the Lord comes, if the Lord were to come back right now, if the Lord were to come back right now, if Jesus were to come back right now with the way that you're living, would you be ashamed before him? Or would you be excited and rejoicing? Because you know that you're living in a manner that is pleasing to him. Ask yourself that question. I can't answer that question for you. We have to live in a way that if the Lord came back right now, I'm not going to be ashamed. Is there anything in my life that I'm doing right now today that if I knew Jesus was coming, I wouldn't do that thing? If I knew and you knew that Jesus was coming at 4 p.m. Eastern time today, how would you prepare? How would we prepare if we knew exactly when Jesus was coming? What would you do different? How would you live different? What would you let go of? What would you stop doing? What would you start doing? What would you stop doing? Something that you're doing right now that you know the Lord is not pleased with. If you knew that Jesus was coming back at four o'clock today, 4 p.m. today, Eastern time, what would you stop doing? Because you're like, I know Jesus is coming. I got to stop this. Or what would I start doing? I need to do this. I need to prepare. I need to get ready. So look at verse 35. It says, let your loins be girded about and, and your lights burning. And, and to have your loins girded about here, it means to be dressed and ready. It means to be dressed. So number one, we must be dressed. We must be dressed. Because when you're dressed and when you're ready, you're not going to have anything to be ashamed of. Because if you're naked, if somebody came into your house and you're not dressed, it would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? It would be embarrassing if someone came to your house, you know, and they're coming to pick you up, to take you somewhere, but you're not dressed. How embarrassing would that be? Because why? Your nakedness would be showing. So he says, let your loins be girded about. In other words, I want you to be dressed. I want you to be ready for my return. Amen. He says, and your lights burning. Your lights. We must be in a state of constant readiness. Type that in this morning. I must live in a state of constant readiness. My husband is an awesome man of God. And I love the saying, the wisdom nuggets that he gives us on a regular basis. He says, we need to stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Somebody type that in this morning. I must stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Amen. Because when the Lord comes, you're not going to have time to say, wait a minute, I got to get myself together. I've got to get this. I got to get my clothes on. You know, you, I got one leg in my pants, but we must be in a live in a state of constant readiness. We must be dressed. We must be in a state of constant readiness. And then he says, and with your lights burning, didn't Jesus tell us, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. We must have our lights burning. We must have make sure that we have enough oil in our lamps and have extra oil. And the picture that as I was studying this, the commentary was saying that we must maintain a temper of mind which we would be willing when the Lord should come and find us. To watch for Christ's coming is to maintain a temperament of mind which would be fitting and pleasing to the Lord. A state of constant preparedness. Amen? And this oil, we, you know the story of the parable of the ten virgins, you know, the wise, there were five wise and five foolish virgins, and we know what happened in that parable, right? Five of them took extra oil in their lamps. 
The other five did not. So we, he says, let your, let your loins be girded. That means to be, be dressed and ready, living in a state of constant preparedness and readiness because we don't know when he's coming and your lights burning. You got to have the oil of the Holy Spirit burning in your life. Amen. Don't let the flame go out. Because if your flame goes out and the Lord comes back, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to see, you're not going to be able to go back with him because you don't have that oil. So we must have our lights burning. We must be sure to have oil in our lamps. Do you have enough oil? Ask yourself, ask yourself, take an, ex make an examination of yourself. Lord, do I have enough oil? Do I have I been praying enough? Have I, have I been witnessing, sharing the gospel with people? Am I being obedient to what God has been telling me to do? Or have I been slothful and lazy, an unwise servant? All right, we must be faithful. And then verse 36 says, and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes knocking, that they may open unto him immediately. Amen. That's right, Brother David. Do I have enough oil? You know what? We all know within ourselves whether we have enough oil. Amen. We all know right now in this moment, Lord God, am I lacking in Felt the Holy Spirit jolt me. Am I lacking or do I have enough oil right now? Amen. Let's stay ready, people of God. Let's watch and pray. But look at this. In verse 36, it says that he's going to come knocking and they may open unto him immediately. You know, when someone is knocking at your door and after a while, if they're, they keep knocking and they're like, are they? Well, I know they're home. Why are they not coming to the door? It's because maybe they're not dressed. They're not ready. But here, when he comes knocking, and if we're ready and if we're prepared, we're going to open that door to him immediately because we're going to be happy to see him. We're going to like, it's the Lord. He's here. Come on. Oh, yes, he's here. But if we're not ready, we can be like, oh, Lord, I got, I got hold on. I, I, I can't find my other shoe. Where's my shirt? I can't, oh, my, they're not, we're not dressed. OMG, we, we need to be dressed. So when he comes knocking, we open that door immediately. We are ready. We're like, yes, everything is set. Everything is in order. I'm keeping short accounts with people. I don't have unforgiveness in my heart. I'm walking in love towards people. I'm doing good unto those who, who do me wrong. Amen. Keep me burning. That's right. Keep me burning, Harry Bestie. Good to see you on this morning. Need more oil. Need more oil. So when he comes, we can open that door immediately. Not, not 30 minutes later. He's been knocking for 30 minutes. No, no, no. They may open unto him immediately. And look at verse 37. Oh my God. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Blessed are those servants whom, when he comes, shall find watching. And when I was looking up that word watching, it means on guard. Are you on guard? Verily I say unto you that he, now this was awesome when I was reading this, that he, Jesus, the servants who are prepared, who are watching when he comes back, living in that state of constant preparedness and readiness, this is what it says that Jesus is going to do for these servants, these faithful servants. It says that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down. He's going to make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Wow. Wait a minute. Jesus. That's right, sister. Jesus is knocking. Are we ready to let him in? Or are we, are we half-heartedly? We're not quite there. But here's the thing. For those who are ready, for those who are prepared, for those who are faithful, for those who are being obedient, look at what it says. 
It says that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down. Sit down to meet. Wow. This is a reward. Amen. And will come forth and serve them. Look at this. There is rich reward in living a life ready and expectant for Jesus to return. If we live our lives ready, expecting him to return, it's going to pay off. That's right. Faithfulness will pay off. It says, G but look, it says Jesus is going to serve those who are faithful. He's going to have, he says, sit down, recline. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to serve you. You've been faithful. You were watching and waiting and expecting my return. You did those things that I've required of you. And now it's your time to sit back and relax. And the Lord Jesus Christ, this is amazing. He shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Oh my God. And will come forth and serve them. He's going to serve them meat. He's going to serve us meat. Oh my God. Look at this, 38, and it shall come, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants, regardless of what time he comes. If he come in the first watch, they're ready. If he come in the second watch, they're ready. If he comes later, they're ready, no matter when, because they just stayed ready. They don't know if he's coming in the first, second, or third watch. Whatever time he comes. They're ready. Amen. Verse 39. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. He would have been on guard. Like I said, if we knew that Jesus was coming at 4 p.m. today, four o'clock today, if we knew that, we would go ahead and get ready. We would guard. We will be repenting of sins. We would be getting things right. Amen. Just, just imagine if you knew that he was coming at four o'clock, you would be watching. You'd be like, I'm waiting. Yes, sir. Got my bags packed. Cleared all my accounts. I'm ready. But that's not how it works. He says, if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief was coming. Because he said he's coming like a thief in the night, right? He would have watched and we, he would not have suffered his house to be broken through. God says, we must be watching. We must be waiting. We must be ready. Because if we, if we knew he was coming at a certain time, we would make preparations. And look at this. He says, like a thief in the night, a thief doesn't announce when he's coming. Knocking on your door and say, I'm here to steal and rob from you. Open the door. No, he comes when everybody's asleep. It's late at night. Nobody's aware. Nobody's on guard. Holy Spirit is speaking. We must be on guard. Amen. We must be on guard. Be on guard against what? Be on guard against whatever those things would be to lure you away from Christ. Be on guard against those things that keep you from praying, that keep you from studying his word, that keep you from being obedient. What is it that's keeping you from being obedient to God? What is it that's hindering your walk with God? What is it that's keeping you from going higher in Christ? What is it that's keeping you lazy or slothful or ill-prepared or not ready? What is it? Is it a relationship? Is it something you're doing? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bitterness? Are you holding something in your heart against somebody? Today is the Lord is saying, whatever it is, I need you to let that go because that thing is making you not prepared. Ooh, Jesus. That's right. The enemy wants us distracted. You know, I think sometimes we live and even though we're Christians, most of us on here are Christians and we love the Lord. But I think sometimes in the back of my, our minds, we live as if this is not really going to happen. Janet says TV. All right. 
we sometimes we act like this is not going to happen. Like we're just going to keep on living our lives, you know, going on and on. But this is going to happen. Jesus is coming back one day. He is coming back. And then verse 40, he says, be ye therefore ready also. For the son of man cometh at an hour when you think not. He's coming at an hour when we're not thinking he's coming. Whatever it is, Lord, that we that's keeping us from being prepared, from that's keeping us from living in that state of constant readiness. God, that's keeping me from being watchful and expecting your return. Do you know we're supposed to live our lives every single day like Jesus is coming back? Every day. Do we live that way? We could have all of us would say no. Do we live our lives every single day as believers like Jesus is coming back today. Today. Wow. We all know the embarrassment of being called upon when not prepared. Jesus told everyone to be prepared for his coming, which is the most important thing that anyone could ever be ready for. We must live in a constant readiness for Jesus' return. Are we watching? Are we watching? Do we really live like Jesus is coming back? Amen. And here's the thing. These servants, and I was really blown away when I was reading and studying this part right here. These servants who are ready for their master's return, these are servants who are faithful to their calling. Selah. What has God called you to do? What are you supposed to be doing? The servants who are ready, watching, waiting for the return are those who are faithful to their calling. What has God called you to do? What is he telling you? What has he told you to do that you've been slack, lazy, slothful about? It's time to get rid of it. All of us, all of us, it's time to be obedient. It's time to put off whatever it is that you've been um, doing that's not pleasing to the Lord. All of us, it's time to get serious. It's time to be obedient. It's time to walk faithfully before the Lord. Jesus said, let your loins be girded, be dressed, be dressed in garments of righteousness, be dressed. Amen. There's certain places that the Lord's been telling certain people to stop going. There's certain things he's been saying, stop doing. Certain places visiting on the internet, he says, stop it. Because it's going to keep you from being ready. Okay, I'm going to see a little bit um, out of focus. I'm sorry. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. We must not take advantage of the delay in Jesus' return by pursuing sinful pleasures. Rather, we must live each day, each day, as if it was the day of his return. Today, what if he was coming back today? What would you do different? What would I do different, Charlene, knowing that if I knew that Jesus was coming today, what do I need to do different? Ask yourself that. Amen. This is a very sober message this morning. What would I do different if I knew Jesus was coming right now in the next 15 minutes? I know it's a deep message, but it's, it's the word. Wow. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. And I love the fact that there is such rich reward when we are ready and watching and waiting. The fact that Jesus is going to gird himself and make us to sit down at meat and serve us. 
Let's stay dressed. Let's get dressed and stay dressed. Help us, help us all. Help, Lord, this is a me- help us all. We all need help. Every one of us. None of us have arrived. Thank God that He's giving us time to get it right. Thank you, Jesus, that you haven't returned because you're giving us time. The delay in his return is his grace. Thank you, Jesus. The fact that he has not come yet is his grace and his mercy because he's giving us more time to get it right, to to be dressed, to get ready, to prepare. Lord, help us, Father, in Jesus' name to be faithful, to be obedient. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and and your delay because you could have come back and, and caught us unaware and we would have been lost. But you are not willing that any perish, but that all come into repentance. So, Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to be faithful to the calling. Help us to be obedient. Help us to watch. Help us to pray. Help us to forgive. Help us to uh, put away those things that we need to put away. Help us to do those things that we need to do. And, Lord, just make us to be like these faithful servants who were watching, who were dressed, who were in a constant state of expectancy and looking for the return of Jesus. This is real. This is real. Help us to live like this is real because it's real. And Lord, those of us who are teachers and preachers and ministers, um, oh God, we're going to be held to a higher standard. God, help us to be ready. Help us to teach and to preach and Lord, um, work while it's day because there's a time coming where we're, it's, we're not going to be able to. Help us to live today as if you're returning today. Today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God's given us time to get it right. That's right. He's given us time. I don't know about you. I need it. I need God, help me to be prepared. I don't want to preach to you and then I'm not ready. I don't want to preach to you and I'm not ready. I'm undressed. Come on, ministers. Amen. We've we've got to be prepared. What we preach, we've got to live. My husband is so big on that. I thank God for him. What we preach, what I preach to you, saints, I've got to live this thing. I don't want to be a castaway after I've preached to you. Amen. I got to be ready. Stay ready in Jesus name. So God, thank you for helping all of us to be dressed, to be ready. Our lamps burning. May we burn for you, Jesus. That's been my prayer lately. God, I want to burn for you. God, make me on fire for you, Jesus. How many of you at some time in your life, you remember you were a little more on fire than you are right now? Can anybody relate to that? Maybe there was a time in your life where you were more on fire for God. You were witnessing to everybody. You were sharing Jesus. And over time, you just kind of let it just kind of waned. The fire went down. God says, let, let the light burn. Let the fire burn in you again. Lord, let your fire burn in us again. In Jesus' name, Father, may we be watching, ready, dressed in the name of Jesus. I want to burn. I want to burn for you. Only you. Amen. I want to burn for you, Jesus. Let's get back to our first love. Help us all, God, to do better. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us are saying that this message was for us today. And I just pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would bless and help each one of us to not just hear this word, but to really take it to heart. To really take it to heart. Not let it go in one ear and out the other. But may we take it to heart. May we apply it to our lives. May we live our lives in a manner that Jesus could come today. And with that in mind, that we live our lives in a way that we we know that we're prepared. We won't have any reason to be ashamed or try to run and hide from his presence because we're not ready. Holy Spirit, make us ready. Make us ready. Lord God, thank you for helping us to get dressed and stay dressed, stay ready. Thank you for helping us to let the light burn bright, the fire burn bright in us, Lord. 
and that um, when anything comes to try to dis extinguish our light, we would cast that away, Lord God. And I just thank you for blessing my sisters and the brothers, Father God, that we're all, when you come back, Jesus, we will be ready. We're just going to speak that by faith that we will be ready. We're going to get ready and stay ready in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Sobering message for all of us today. Let's live like Jesus is coming back today because a thief doesn't announce when he's coming and he's coming back like a thief in the night. But those servants who are watching and waiting, they're ready. No matter what watch he comes in, the first watch, second watch, third watch, ready. So let's live this way. This is serious, God. This is serious. God, help us to take this seriously. Help us, Lord God. I wish you were here with me, Harry, to sing it. <laughs> Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. But that is our prayer. Give me oil in my lamp and keep me burning. Amen. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. What is? What are the things that keep the uh, oil in our lamps and keeps it burning? What are, what are some things that we need to do that we should be doing that keeps us in a constant state of readiness? I see Reverend Davis here on, on today, Reverend. This is our resident uh, Bible scholar. I'm asking him, Reverend Davis, what are some things that we need to be doing? And Brother David, you as well. What are some things we need to be doing to be to live in a state of readiness? Type that in for me. What are some things, guys? What are some things, guys, that we need to be doing to keep ourselves in a constant state of readiness? Amen. Staying in the word, Tasha says, amen. Staying in the word. Brother David says fasting. Nadine says prayer and fasting. Janet says we should be travailing. Patricia says ingesting and digesting the word. Oh, yes, that's good. Mike says we need to stay focused on the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love all these great answers and they're all true. So let's go and do these things. Rhonda says stop wasting time. Harriet says, worship, study God's word, win souls for Christ. Amen. David says, lay aside every weight and sin. Tracy says, stay in the word. Amen. These things we got to do, you guys. And you know what? We have a real enemy, don't we? We have a real enemy who is going to fight us tooth and nail to not do those things that you listed. He's going to fight you tooth and nail. He's going to fight me tooth and nail. And the flesh partners with the enemy when we don't put our flesh under, right? Somebody said, okay, seek God early in the morning, noonday, and in the night hour. Amen. Seek him all throughout the day. That's right, baby. Seek his will. Holy Spirit, keep us. That's right. So let's endeavor. Let's pray one for another. We have a real enemy. That's right. Who is going to fight us tooth and nail because he does not want us to be ready. He doesn't want us to be ready. He wants us to miss the return of G. He wants us to not be ready. He wants to do everything he can to keep us from praying, studying the word, being obedient. I'm going to add a couple of other things. You guys listed some great things, but you know what? Some other things is we got to not gossip about people. We got to not talk about people behind their backs. We got to let go of jealousy, envy, and strife. We got to get rid of bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts. We got to walk in love toward people. We got to speak out of our mouths things that are edifying to people. Amen. That build people up and not tear them down. We got to not stop sowing seeds of division. Amen. We got to stop being worldly or being carnal, but have the mind of Christ. Be accountable to one another. Prayer. Be humble. Amen. So many things that we've got to do, people of God. Let's follow the commandments. Amen. Amen. Let's be obedient. I pray you all take this to heart. God, help us all take this message to heart. Father, and where our hearts are hard. Sometimes over time when we've been obedient for a, 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 a season, Lord God, our hearts can become hard and we can hear the word, but they won't penetrate our heart. God, soften our hearts. You're, this is what, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord says, I'm calling my people to break up 
their fallow ground. Mm, mm, mm. God is calling us to break up our fallow ground. Our hearts are hard. And God says it's time to break up the fallow ground. You know what fallow ground is? Ground that's hard. Ground that's just rocky. And God says it's time to break up the fallow ground. God, help us to break up our fallow ground in our hearts, oh God. That our hearts would be soft and tender and pliable, Father God. That the cares of this life, Father God, would not take over. Oh, Father, help us to be obedient, Lord, to your call. Break up the fallow ground. Break it up. Pray, fast, study the word. Show us, all, show us the things that are in us that are not of you, Lord. Pull up the weeds, all the things, Lord God. Cultivate, that's right, in Jesus' name. Soften our hearts, Lord. Penetrate, Holy Spirit. Make us ready, in Jesus' name. All right, guys, we got work to do. We got work to do. I thank God for his grace like I said, it's his grace and it's his mercy that he has delayed his return because we need to get ready and stay ready in Jesus name. I love you guys. Say la this word. Say la. Pause. Meditate on it. Let's meditate on this. Let's get right in Jesus name. All right. God bless you all. Love you. Have a great weekend and let's do these things. Let's do what we've heard. Let's, let's do what God is telling us in his word. All right. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.